Okay, welcome to our third and final screencast for this first guide sheet on motion in one dimension. Uh, we're going to use a couple of different graphics to help get some more examples of this difference between displacement and distance. Displacement being the vector quantity, distance being the scalar quantity. Uh, our first graphic is this uh, motion of a person from A to B. They're taking a walk. We're tracking their different individual motions until they get to point B. Uh, the length of each block here is one kilometer, so we're going to use that grid to help us figure out the distance moved by the person. Uh, we also have a direction here, north and east, that would make this south and this west. We're going to use that to help us with uh, the scalar, uh, the vector quantity of displacement. Okay, so first let's count the distance traveled. Now that's just a total, running total of the ground covered. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 kilometers. Okay, it doesn't need a direction. It's a, it is a scalar quantity. It's ignorant of direction. Direction does not matter. So the 31 kilometers, now I do need the kilometers to say how big it is. A unit's going to be an, an important part throughout our study of physics. Uh, uh, 31 kilometers is definitely very different than 31 meters. Uh, now that's about 19 miles, so you can see that's quite a walk. It's not the kind of walk that we take every, most people take every day. Okay, now we're going to try to figure out the displacement of the person. Now here we're given multiple options. Uh, anytime you're given multiple options with displacement, you can start by crossing off anything other than zero that doesn't have a direction. It cannot possibly be any of those quantities that don't have a direction associated with it, other than zero, because zero doesn't really have a direction. Um, because it is a vector quantity, it has to have two elements. It has to have a magnitude, 10 kilometers, 3 kilometers, 3 meters, 4 miles, and a direction. In this case, we're going to use east, north, south, or west because they've marked direction for us on the graphic. All right, so now um, <clears throat> we want to take a look and see uh, which other elements we can get rid of. And displacement is from where you started to where you finished. So, cancel that. Uh, we just want to go back to our little pen here. Uh, one, two, th one, two, three kilometers is how far we've gone. So, we can get rid of everything that's not three. Okay, now we have three kilometers east and three kilometers west. It's going to be one of those, so it's not none of these choices. Uh, now, here's our east. East is to the right, and again, it's the um, distance, the, your change in position. So, you went um, from this spot, A, to point B. You are now one, two, three kilometers to the east of where you started. So the correct answer is going to be three kilometers east. Okay, it is a vector, so again it has the comma E, that's for east. Every vector quantity that you write is going to need to have a size, something to measure it against, and some kind of direction. Uh, the unit you use for measure is going to be different depending on what's moving. The direction you use is going to be different depending on how you're measuring that direction. But it has to have those three parts if it's a vector. Okay, so here's another different graphic, a skier instead of somebody walking. Uh, going back and forth. And this time we have a device that's very helpful to tracking things. Uh, we have a what essentially is a number line. Uh, here that tells us that over here is zero. Uh, in this case, um, meters. Okay, it says the unit is meters, so this is zero meters, and over here is 160 meters. And then we have everything marked out nicely in a uh, scale where each uh, line spacing is going to be 10 meters. That's very helpful if you're trying to keep track of 
the position or location of something, which is a big part of your displacement. Okay, so the first question is, uh, what is the distance traveled by the skier during the entire three minutes of recreation? Uh, they're moving from point A to point D during that time. So we have to track each leg of the motion. So here's A, starting at zero, and they go all the way out to B. So for the first leg, it's 180 meters. Then they come back to point C. Now that's 160 minus 40, so that's going to be an additional 120. Now it is to the left, but it doesn't matter. We're talking about distance here. It has nothing to do. You can be covering the exact same ground. What it is is a measure of the total ground you're covering. Uh, and then finally we're going back out to 120, so 120 minus 40 is another 80 meters. Now all we really need here to find the distance is to add the three individual distances together. So we have 180 plus 120 plus 80. So that's 200. That's going to be 300, 380 meters of total distance. Which direction we move doesn't matter. It's nothing about direction. It's just how far we have or how much ground we have covered. Now, displacement of the skier during the three minutes of recreation. The total three minutes of recreation are, uh, again, from point A to point D, right out here. Now, our person has moved from zero to 120. If we draw a straight line with an arrow from the direction of where we started to where we finished, we'll know the displacement of the person. That's going to be D. Now, if you're marking a displacement, you should draw an arrow over the top of it to show that it's a vector. Uh, and that's 120 meters from where we started. And in this case, we could say it's to the east, we could say it's to the right. Uh, we could say it's in the positive direction. So we have a number of different ways of marking out that direction. But it does have to include three elements. I have to have the number, what I measured the number against, and the direction. OK, next question. What's the displacement during the second minute? OK, that's from one minute to two minutes. Well, here's one minute. I'm sorry, here's one minute at 160, and here's two minutes. Uh, now, we already mentioned that that was uh, 120 meters of distance, 160 minus 40 uh, is 120 meters. Now, we want it in terms of a displacement. So again, I'm going to need three parts. It's 120 meters again. Notice that's the same magnitude as the one we had before. Um, But now I need to put a direction on it. Now this time, I was over here at 160, and now I'm back at 40. So now it's the direction, it's the uh, distance in a straight line from where you started to where you finished. So I'm now west or to the left of where I started. So I can say to the west. Um, I could even use in this case a negative number to indicate that direction. Okay, and then finally, what's the displacement during the third minute from uh, two minutes to three minutes? Well, at two minutes, I was here at 40, and at three minutes, I'm at 120. Now, we already said that's 80 meters, but again, um, if we're looking for the displacement, I need three parts. It's going to be the 80 meters, but I also need the direction. So 80 is the value, meters is the unit I measured against, and then the direction, I started here, I ended to the right of where I was, so I'm going to call that east. Okay, so that's some of the uh, key elements you have to have to differentiate the various scalar and vector quantities. In this case, we're concentrating on uh, displacement and distance. 
Um, that's a very fine language differences you're going to have to talk about, so get used to using those terms and try to use them precisely. Don't th throw around words like distance and displacement without being careful about what you're trying to say. They are not the same thing.